Now for something completely different. Smoke medical. We eat every day. The following thoughts on Hoffy Hour represent Brian Hoffy and Pastis. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Starts in four, three, two, hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour with Hoppy. Oh my goodness. Jeff Zito from 98.7 The Shark is here. You you really pumped me up there with that countdown. I like that. Thank you, man. It's uh, me doing radio production. That was like the one thing I learned in my radio trade school, which uh, I only went there because I needed uh, internship hours or right. whatever. But man, all they taught me was Adobe Audition. That's that's a good way to start, though. I notice in radio you learn more from just doing it. It is than uh, yeah. from like a school. It's like bartending school. Yeah. You know? What are you going to learn from bartending school? How to make a screwdriver, and then somebody goes, hey, I'll "Take a Harvey Wallbanger," and you're like, "Well, what's that?" They tell you how to make it, and then the, there you go. Now you got another drink under your belt. You know? Did you go to that school, bartending school, or bartending school? No, I look like I went to bartending school, don't I? I you did. look, you I, look, I, I look like, like you, that. like you would be like top of the class at bartending school. I appreciate that. I take that as a compliment. No, I, I never went to bartending school. I thought about it though. Man, bartending to me is a fascinating thing. I don't really drink that much. I went out Saturday and I went to Pharaoh's gig, and there's a certain like art of knowing how to like make the drink. Like, I feel like bartenders are very underappreciated. Like at uh, 1701 where Pharaoh was at, man, the drink was lit. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody made the drink. Like it's like an underappreciated it's art. An art. Yeah, it's an art. You know what bothers me is you ever watch that show like uh, Bar Rescue? Yeah. And then the the guy that hosts the show, John Tapper, he's always getting excited and like, ah, we're shutting it down. Yeah. That guy, he brings like a, a mixologist with him and that guy always bugs me. It's always a different guy. But they like do these fancy little shakes behind the back. Yeah. It's like, come on, guy. Like just... Pour me the drink, make sure it's cold or the way I ordered it. What's with the, you know, flipping it up and making eye contact with the bar? You know, yeah. I don't get that. Have you interviewed John? I have. And what's your podcast called so everybody can check it out? My podcast is called the Celebrity Jobber Podcast. Yes. And it's uh, basically talks to um, people that you probably know, you know, rock stars, some no comedians, yeah. you know, like a, a whole... A lot of different people. And it's not like, it's not like the biggest stars. Like I had Joe Perry on there, which was pretty cool. But you know, like I got the idea from like, you know, celebrity fit club, you know, you would look at some of the people on there and you're like, well, who's that? That's kind of a celebrity. So they're kind of celebrities. You've heard of most of them. Some you might not have heard of, but we talk about their big break and what their first job was. And it's kind of relatable and fun. What's the name of the wife from Everyone Loves Raymond? I like that episode. That is... Uh, Patricia Heaton? Yeah. Yeah, very nice. I was going to say Deborah because I yeah. always know her as Deborah uh, Barone. It took me a second. Yeah, yeah. That was a very good episode. What a... What a... Um, her character. Like, what a nag. So I, I was, like, kind of wondering when I was having her on if she was going to be, like, naggy like her character. But she wasn't. She was very sweet. She was, uh, she was very interesting. Lost her mother at a very young age. It was, like, a really cool story. One of my biggest regrets in life was I uh, emailed Raymond's mom in 2015 to come on to my podcast and her like publicist got back to me and then I was like too lazy and I didn't respond and then four, four months later she died she and I croaked. went, damn it, yeah. it's my biggest regret is not getting her on. Yeah, sometimes, uh, yeah, the window, the window is very uh, narrow with those, those older, older folks. Dude, what about Pee Wee Herman dying? Dude, you want to hear something about Pee Wee Herman? He went to the same high school that I went to. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, we're we're years apart, as you could probably imagine. He's, I think, 70, and I just had my 30th uh, high school reunion over uh, over the weekend. But Pee Wee Herman, Sarasota High School, I think class of 71. I want to make you feel ill right. for a second. Okay. The year you graduated high school? Yeah. I wasn't even born yet. It was three uh, months before I was born because I'm guessing you graduated in May or June. I graduated in May of 1993. Yeah, I was in my mom. I was in. Wow. I was not born yet. Yeah, it makes me feel a little bit old. 
And you know, it really makes me feel, um, it makes me feel sorry for your mom because I wonder <laughs> how big of a baby you are and you must've been in a lot, she must've been in a lot of pain. Um, she doesn't want to talk about it. Um, she could have sued the doctor cause you know what happened? What? I was 12 pounds. Wow. And <laughs> at six or seven pounds, you're supposed to get a C-section. Right. And they didn't give her a C-section. Oh no. So my head got caught. There's a little mark on my head right there. Right. That's from getting caught. Like she had to like push me out. She didn't never wants to talk about it. And I bet I bet your father doesn't want to talk about it either. <laughs> no, he does not. Yeah, that's a moment that ruins everything. Ruined everything, man. Oh man. I came to the realization today. I was at a, a Kava bar and I drink Kava and Kratom. It helped me like not drink as much. Like I got drunk on this past weekend, but like I used to get drunk a lot more. Explain to, to me this Kava and Kratom Okay, stuff. it's very controversial because it can be a little um, addicting, but nothing bad, but it relaxes you. There's different types. It's kind of like how with medical marijuana, there's indica, sativa, hybrid. There's different types for Kratom. There's green, which makes you very euphoric. Okay. Red relaxes you. White is kind of like... <laughs> Just makes oh. you really hyper. Okay. And gotcha. then uh, yellow kind of chills you out. And the problem is it's replacing medicine like millennials and Gen Z. And even like your generation, a lot of people around your age are realizing that they don't want to take meds for their ADHD or whatever, or for whatever th pain they're going through. Right. Because it pretty much relaxes your body. And it can also relax your mind. That's Kratom. Kava, to me, it's like you're drinking just like muddy water and it relaxes you, but it doesn't make you pr productive at all. You know, it doesn't really make you too energetic. It's kind of like drinking like a Bud Light. Like if you have enough, it's called muddy. You feel very relaxed. Okay. Have you ever, do you remember when um, it was like Marley green tea. Do you remember the Marley, Bob Marley green tea? Yes. They used to sell it. They stopped selling it because I don't know what was in it. Maybe there was some kava or something in it, but you, I would have one every night before bed and it would make me sleep like a baby. And I'm thinking to myself, man, if you're pounding one of these during the daytime, you might be taking a nap at work or falling asleep behind the wheel. See, the funny part is I'm such an anxious person. Have you seen Futurama? The uh, cartoon? A little bit. You know how Bender drinks a lot? To I do. That's, there's aspects of my life where that helps me be normal. Okay. So it's, fa it's fascinating. Some people are <laughs> like, and I'm just being careful with how I say this, but I'm just saying some people go, oh, it makes me too sleepy. Or, no, 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 it makes me normal. Okay. Well, I know a lot of people that, um, you know, smoke weed to just kind of make yeah. them normal, you know, that might be what I'm talking about. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. either. It's yeah. such an iffy subject. <laughs> I don't know how to address it. It's like, I feel like it's the like elephant in the room of our planet. I, I think we're getting there. I think we're close. I think close. Yeah. We're getting closer and closer. What we need to have happen is have radio commercials about it. Yeah, I think we're still a little bit of ways from that's, that. And that's what makes me upset. But, that but can't, once the money starts rolling in, right? You know, once, once they, it's recreational. Because it's a law right now where you can't, uh, dispensaries can't be on the air. You can do certain things with the doctor. Uh, but once you can, like, if you ever drive around in Michigan, the only billboards you see on the highway are like, these ambulance chaser attorneys and like the new strain of Snoop Dogg OG 420. I mean, it's like that's all the advertisement you see on billboards on the roadways in Michigan. Are you from Michigan? I'm not. No, my wife is from Michigan. I went to college in Michigan. I've never been to Michigan. I'm from the Midwest and it's literally the only place in the, and I've never been to Minnesota, but I've never been to Michigan. Where are you, where are you from? In the Midwest? I'm from Chicago. Oh, okay. I, I don't consider that the Midwest because really? yeah, cause it's a big city and it's probably one of my favorite cities uh, to go to. I, I, I uh, love it. I love I'm Chicago. from the suburbs and I do agree with you on the Midwest part. It's like if you put NYC, but did like a different version that's less flashy and more yeah. crime ridden right. in like the middle because I was talking to a girl on uh, Tinder the other day and she was talking about, oh my God, is Springfield, Illinois, like Chicago? And that's when I thought I was like, I don't think Chicago is really Illinois. I think it's its own animal. It's its own thing. I, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. Because it's the same thing with like New York. Everybody thinks like New York 
is what New York State is. It's like, no, there's New York City and there's Midtown and, you know, Broadway and and all that. And then there's New York State, which is just a lot of farm. And it looks like any other state that you drive through, you know. How many uh, different like places in America have you been to in, in your life? Oh, I don't know. I I would have to say um, not many. You know, I, I'd really like to start traveling to more. I just went to Texas for the first time in uh, February. Um, you know, up the East Coast. I've been to Chicago, Michigan. Uh, ha- I've been to California. I do like it out there to visit, but not really to live. I've been to Arizona. You know, a lot of the Midwestern states, though, I have not been to Wisconsin or Minnesota, like you said. You're not messing much with Wisconsin. I'm probably, yeah, I'm sure you're right. It's not bad. It's just not anything that's worth visiting. Right. Except like going to Lambeau Field. That's the only thing I I've never visit. been to Green Bay. I've only been to Milwaukee, which is like, if like Gotham was a real life town, it'd be Milwaukee. Really? It's okay. very like... There's motorcycle factories and beer factories. It's very uh, grungy. It's not my vibe. Do you miss Chicago? No, because there's no opportunity there. Oh, okay. Like literally none. Like when I went to the radio trade school 10 years ago, I uh, it was a blessing because all the uh, internships were just three months. Back then it was CBS radio. All the internships were just three months. But I had an eighteen month internship at an EDM radio show, and I like met the chain smokers before they were famous when they were just doing the uh, selfie That's song. Cool. Enough. Yeah. But man, getting a job in Chicago radio is almost impossible. Yeah, it's tough in any big market, you know. That's why I, you know, I like to tell a lot of guys that um, if they're ever looking for advice, I, I, I like to say go to a smaller market, get some reps. If you got some experience. You go to a smaller market and then you, you get some reps and then, then you move up. And that's what you did with being in Fort Myers, correct? Um, somewhat. Yeah. I, I started radio in, um, Sarasota, uh, back in, uh, the, the heydays, uh, you were probably just a baby. And, uh, and then I moved to Tampa and, and came, uh, and, and worked up in Tampa for a few years, but then I got a good gig in Fort Myers and developed a morning show there that was uh, somewhat successful. And then, um, you know, we lasted there for you know, a dozen years or so, which is pretty good run in, in radio. So uh, then, then I came back. I was uh, making that uh, collage to promote that you're coming on the show and you had the funny tweet of that is my Tinder picture. Yeah, that's it. And you know that you've made a mark in a radio market when there's a newspaper article about you not being there anymore. And there was, that was one of the first things on Google Images for Jeff Zito was about that show ending. So that's when you know you made a mark. Wow, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's over. Uh I guess you made a mark. Yeah. It was uh it was a good time. We had a good we had a good rundown in Fort Myers. And Fort Myers is a, a pretty cool coastal town, you know. There's Fort Myers, there's Naples, there's Cape Coral. It's a good little little city, but you know, to be honest, uh, moving here uh about 4 or 5 years ago, the amount of people that uh moved to Tampa or or that are driving through to go to a concert, something like that, That'll call me that remember me from the uh, from the old days. It's pretty cool. I love how 98.7 The Shark works, man. I think it's done very well. Yeah, thank you. It's, uh, you know, classic rock. You know, I mean, uh, it, it's it's kind of funny. You know, classic rock is kind of becoming um, popular with the younger audience right now. Why, why Do you listen to any classic rock? Okay. I don't know much about rock. The problem was... The hardest rock my dad would listen to, the only thing was R.E.M. So okay. I didn't really grow up with it around, but I want to learn about it because I'm a huge fan of hip hop from the 90s, 2000s, and even a lot of what wild plays I can get down with and party to. But like, I don't know that much about rock, but I'm a fan of it. Right on. Well, I mean, there's something about, you know, rock right now. You'll see a lot of people that you don't expect to. Uh, to see wearing certain t-shirts. I saw like some mom in Costco wearing a Nirvana shirt, you know, like Nirvana was my life when I was 16 years old. And it was just like, wow, that's kind of strange. Or you'll see, you know, uh, somebody else that you just wouldn't expect. Like, you know, I saw a black kid uh, the other day wearing a pink Floyd shirt and I was like, cool shirt, man. He's like, cool. And it's just, I think it's this cultural thing now with classic rock that, you know, all different types of people, you know, find it, find it cool. You know what I don't like 
is the like very contrarian negative people that get mad when people wear shirts, but don't know any of the songs. Yeah, it's like man. they're keeping the legacy around and how many people that like, let's say you're going to Publix and you run into 400 people or whatever, or you go throughout the day and you see all these people, you go to the mall and everybody sees your shirt. That band might get some listens from that person wearing a shirt. I don't like the deep rock and roll fans that like, Go, oh, I don't think Gen Z knows three songs yeah. from Pearl Jam. It's You're like, right. Come on now. I, I remember there was like a, a woman from like one of those Housewives shows and she was like wearing a, Nerv- or a, a Metallica shirt on, on one of the interviews. And somebody's like, name one song from Metallica. And she couldn't do it. And they, you know, shamed her. And I was just like, you know what? That's a cool logo. And she's like uh, aware enough to know that it's cool and that people like it. And she's just, you know. It's stylish. So, like, you don't have to be an expert on every, you know, I got a a Wu-Tang Clan shirt that I wear and I'm not the biggest Wu-Tang fan, but, you know, but I'm a, I'm a, you know, a little bit of a fan and definitely the image of their logo, I think is pretty cool. You know what song is phenomenal? It's Rusty Cage by Soundgarden. Yeah, man. That song will pump me up. You know, I could tell you a little story about that Uh, back in the day. We went to, uh, we were, we had Chris Cornell on, on our morning show and, um, rest in peace. And, um, he invited us, he really liked us and he was really infatuated by the radio. Chris Cornell was like, I'm really fascinated by what you guys do. You have this control and this power over the radio station. You say what you want, you're playing what you want, which isn't entirely true because you got program directors and people like that keeping an eye on you. But you know, while you're on the air, you literally could do whatever you want, then you would get in trouble if you did something wrong afterwards. But regardless, Chris Cornell invites us to a sound check party that he was having uh, for uh, the band he was playing and was called Audio Slave at the time. That's I've with Tom, it, yeah. Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machine. It was like, like a super group. The guys from Rage Against the Machine and Chris Cornell. So um, they were sound checking and it was over at the, um, the Sun Dome, the Yingling. And uh, we roll up there from Fort Myers, about a two hour drive we got there and we're watching their sound check and Chris Cornell was playing um, Black Hole Sun acoustic and I was just sitting there staring at him like a creep. There was about 20 people uh, in, in the room with me and then finally he he jumped off the stage and we, we called him during the interview. We called him Rock and Roll Jesus. We're like, hey, Rock and Roll Jesus. And he was like, hey, what's up, guys? And he comes over to me and my partner, uh, radio partner that is, and he puts his arm around us and he starts telling us a story about Rusty Cage and how Johnny Cash called him to ask him if it was okay for him to cover the song Rusty Cage. He just just starts telling us this story about Johnny Cash and Rusty Cage. I'll just never forget that as long as I live. It was a really, really cool moment. Did you ever meet the lead singer of Linkin Park, Rust in Peace? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, funny story with that. They were opening up for a band. You might know of this band. They're called the Cottonmouth Kings. Have you ever heard of them? I think I've heard the name. They are pro-cannabis uh, uh, guys. They're uh, uh, rappers from um I'm, I'm going to write this down real quick. Yeah, you got to write this down. So, so the Cottonmouth Kings are playing a show in uh, Southwest Florida, and Linkin Park is opening up for the Cottonmouth Kings. And I ended up running into Lincoln Park at this bar called Stevie Tomatoes Sports Page. I don't know if it exists anymore, but we were playing the Golden Tee Golf game uh, all night long, me and Chester Bennington, the singer. And this is just before their album Hybrid Theory broke. Oh my God, uh, but I it was love a, that album. I love that album too. But that was a very cool night that I had too. In the end, I didn't know how sad of a song it was. Completely. But when I was like in elementary school and listening to it on the uh, CD player, I'm telling you, man, nothing beats it. Great. You know what was funny was I was a big fan of the Jay Z Lincoln Park collaboration. Yeah, what was that song called? In the end, Izzo or oh, okay, it was like a remix of yeah, In the End. Okay, they did one with Numb and Encore. Yeah. And what was funny was when I was at that time, 11 or 12, I didn't know that those were separate songs. So I would go to the local library and rent these CDs. Right. And I got the Jay-Z Black Album CD that had uh, Encore. And I went, this is where's Lincoln yeah. Park? <laughs> and then I got the Lincoln Park one. And I'm like, where's Jay-Z? And then I was like, oh, 
what I heard on the radio was different. It was There's hilarious. A, a remix album yeah. that they came in. I think it was called like Re. I don't. I forgot what it was called, but it was definitely a remix yeah. album. It was cool though. I liked it. You didn't real or not you specifically, but I feel like us didn't realize how legendary that music was in the moment. Because I, I feel I, like I, the music that we've talked about, and even Jay Z and Lincoln Park doing music, I feel like. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older and you're getting older, but I don't know. It just doesn't feel like music is the same now. Uh, you're right. And I constantly think of all these bands that are having their farewell tours. You know, you got Aerosmith doing a farewell tour in, in October here in Tampa. And I've never seen Aerosmith before, so I had to buy tickets. And they're behind the stage and they were for like, you know, a lot of money. And I was like, well, I got to see them. Um, but what happens when there's no more Aerosmith? What happens when there's no more, you know, these classic bands calling it quits? Like what's going to replace that? I start looking at some of the new music right now and I'm like, is Breaking Benjamin going to be like a classic band that everybody's going to want to see 30 years from now? It's, it's kind of, it's interesting to think about. There's two 98 rock channels in this town and I prefer 98, seven, obviously. And I'm telling you right now, I can't imagine the other format, their music being referred to as classics in 30 years. I just don't think it's going to be the same. I don't think we're going to look back on Creed and different things and be like, right. It just doesn't feel the same. You know, you got the Foo Fighters, okay, but they've been around for like 30 years, right? So it's not like they're a new band, but some of these new bands that are popular right now, it's, it's funny. You think like, oh, is this the band that's going to be, you know, I'm going to be buying tickets to when I'm 65 years old because they're, you know, I, I just don't know. I don't know who they are yet. What's weird for me is EDM music. I know nothing about it. Electronic dance music. I, I mean, I know what yeah, it yeah, sounds yeah, yeah. like, but I just, I couldn't tell it's you. It's so weird. A lot of the songs are like 13 years old now and they're considered classics. Really? And like, I haven't been to an EDM music fest yet. But it's like so weird seeing people that were like 19 then, 18, they're like 31, and a lot of them have like been in the sun too much. And it's like that certain look where you're like, they did way too much ecstasy. I'm telling you right now, in the early 2010s, I have a friend that was never the same because he kept taking ecstasy. Yeah, don't do that. It'll definitely burn you out. Yeah, it's crazy how that happens. So is Skrillex, is he EDM? Yes, he is Skrillex. Okay. Uh, my favorite is Dead Mouse. D E A D M A U five. They have the five yeah. is the mouse, and that's really good. It hit a certain point. Like I listened back to it, and it's more like, oh, I feel like I'm young again. But it's not the same. But there was a certain energy of like we would underage drink and have parties. And imagine being 17 and you're at a house party with 40 people and all these girls that are high, and like the music's playing. It's like. Do you know um, Dead Mouse's uh, ex-wife? No, she's pr she's pretty hot. You look her up, but um, I'm I'm friends with a band called uh, Godsmack. Have you ever heard yeah, of them? Yeah, I've heard of Godsmack. So the the lead singer is now dating uh, Dead Mouse's wife. Oh my god, and she is. Uh, ooh, she's she's a nice looking lady. I'll tell you that. It is funny how many beautiful women there are on this planet. It's unbelievable. I feel like I'm getting more and more of the pervert side of me as I'm getting older. I feel like I'm turning into like the old man that loves looking at beautiful women. Why not? It's, you know, I mean, and they're here too, by the way. We mentioned all those different places that we've been in the, in the United States. Uh, and I don't care what anybody says about California girls. I'll take Florida girls any day of the week. I They're think they, easier. They live here. Are they? Are they easier? <laughs> totally. You think so? Tell me about this Tinder because I was just joking about that Tinder picture, but I, I do notice that there's a lot of old guys that are on that Tinder. Oh, you that, would do phenomenal you on think Tinder. think so? Oh, you would crush really? it. Really? You would get a 25-year-old in a second. Really? Oh, oh totally. You're doing, you're doing a lot of good for my ego right now. That's great. I'm not just saying that. Uh, you know who told me he did really well? Who's that? Mo Bounds. Oh, he I told, bet. He told me when he was single and he first moved here and was doing his nursing job, he told me that a lot of, that he was so surprised that the younger girls were like into him. He's like, don't you think it's weird that I'm like 18 years older than you? Wow. Really? Well, Mo Bounds, you know, he was a big star. He was on Z100 and, you know, yeah, he was a big star. And by the way, Mo Bounds used to weigh 350 pounds and then got the stomach surgery. Did and he now, really? Yeah. Now he's like svelte. You know? Oh, he is a handsome cat. He is. He, yeah, he is. 
It's very <laughs> weird when you hang around handsome people, not because you're like jealous or anything, but I'm so heterosexual right. that like, I don't see it. And like in the past when I've had girlfriends, they'll be like, Oh, your friend's really handsome. And I'm like, I just view him as my friend. I don't view him as like a sex object. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. Especially with your friends. Um, so I went to my 30th high school reunion over the weekend. It was okay. You know, you, you, you run into most of the people you, you don't talk to in high school and you don't want to talk to them now. Uh, but I did <laughs> run into a friend of mine who I um, haven't seen in 30 years. And we were such good friends in high school. And I was really happy to see him. And he uh, introduced me to his wife. And he's like, I don't know if you know Jen, but she was she like, you know, she was like uh, a little younger uh, than us. She was like a, a year grade below us. Yeah. And um, I'm looking at her and I'm like, oh, I bet I banged this guy's wife uh, back in high school. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was so awkward. Eskimo brothers. Yeah, it was, is that Do what they call that? Yes. Eskimo brothers? Yes. <laughs> Do you think he knows? I don't think so because he was like, I don't know if you guys know each other. I don't think she needs to know. And she came up and we made that awkward eye contact and we're like, oh yeah, hey. Hey, I remember when, how's I, it going? when I gave you head. <laughs> yeah. On a picnic table in the park one day. Yeah. Oh man. I, I, it was kind of funny. Uh, that was awkward. One to 10. How awkward? Um, it was up there. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't usually handle <laughs> awkward situations, but that was that was a good eight and a half or nine. Yeah. <laughs> Did you not expect it? And then she just came. Absolutely around? not. Had no idea <laughs> what his wife. Yo, know, hey, let me introduce you to my wife. I'm like, okay, cool. You was know? this a friends of benefits? Or were you guys dating? Uh, I don't think we were dating. It was just like a couple week, uh, a couple weeks of a hookup. See, I missed out on the hookup thing because I had. Okay. I'm not trying to talk myself down, but I didn't have any reason to deserve getting laid in high school. Okay. I had acne. I was a loud mouth. I was um, just like a very known person, but girls were not attracted to me until like I moved to Florida. And you didn't peak until Florida. Yeah. Okay. And I don't think I've peaked per se, but I've peaked. I but, think you're peaking right now. Yeah. With happy hour. I mean, I think right now is probably you know, ride this out. My I friend. just don't want the climax to end. Like when I'm 35. Well, here's what you have to realize. My friend, um, everybody has a shelf life. You've told me that in our office talk. And, and, and I mean that in more ways than one. I mean that in, in a job, I mean that in looks and, you know, uh, out kicking your coverage, uh, in the dating world. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I'm getting like, I'm 27, 26, 27. I'm hosting a morning show and I am just slaying it. And I thought that would never end. And it did. It ended. Obviously I got married, met my wife who I love and, and she's the only one in my, my world. Uh, but I thought it would never end and it, it ends, it ends. Man, I was thinking about like four years ago, I was 25 and I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. It's so weird to think about how I thought these problems at that point, mostly just controversy and all these annoying things that happened at 1025 The Bone, how I felt like it mattered in the moment. And I'm looking back and I wish I could tell myself at 25, like, oh, cowheads talking smack about you or whatever. And it's like, I wish I could go back and be like, who gives a flying fuck? Right. You know, that's, and that's what I'm focused on for my thirties. And I've been focused on this year is I go all this energy that I could have used to whatever. But you know, you got to realize that's the job, right? The people, the, you know, the reason that people pick on other people in radio, I had a partner that I could get razzed up in a fucking second. And I knew yeah. exactly what to say to them oh, yeah. to get them all heated up and, and all lathered up, lathered up. But, you know, in radio, that's the job, right? And as soon as you realize, like, don't take it personally, man. It's, he's not, he doesn't mean it. Yeah. It's just the show. It's just kind of like, you know, and then you're like, aha, I get it. This guy loves me. He's just busting my chops. It's funny. I've had this um, sort of, mentality and mantra about radio the past few years. And what it is, is as long as you don't touch a kid or hurt animals, 
anybody talking about you on the radio is good publicity. Absolutely. As long as you don't commit a heinous crime. Right. If they're talking about like your dating life or whatever, what it comes with the territory and you can't be sensitive. I was going through a divorce when I was on the air in, in, um, Fort Myers. And I remember the guy on the other station was, uh, telling on me, like I saw him out with this chick the other night and it was like, it was almost like, hey, shut up, man. I'm like going through a divorce. It was like a real emotional I know. time. Isn't it the worst when it happens? Because I had that happen to me this year. And it's like. <sighs> kind of goes with the territory. You know? it's just... that, but that's the thing. And what really helps me is I go on Snapchat a lot and they have Snapchat news and NBA players and rappers and even people on rock bands have to deal with this. So you go, if you want to have the fame and the attention of radio, you got to learn to deal with it. And radio is such the lowest level of celebrity. I mean, those guys and, you know, NBA stars and rappers and stuff like that, they have to deal with it a million times more than we do. We have to worry about one hack uh, radio guy on the other station that nobody's listening to. I don't mean anybody in particular. I'm just uh, saying, exa- you know, because then you'll get a radio guy that goes, Zito, he's talking about me being a hack. I know he is. And <laughs> I, I had a guy that you were talking about earlier that I said something on Twitter one time, yeah. and he thought I was talking about him and yeah. sent his people on me, and I was like, oh my God, I swear to God, I wasn't even talking and the, about you. And the Cretans... Okay. Oh, God. Okay. Here's the thing. Yeah. I've met all my heroes. Right. I've met Opie. He wasn't the friendliest to me, but he was okay. I met Opie from Opie and Anthony. I've met a lot of people from the morning show boot camp radio conference, and none of my heroes were cool to me. The people that were super cool to me were the people that like I looked up to and respected someone like you, but like not someone I grew up listening to because right. the people I grew up listening to all were douchebags to me. Really? And I, not in a bad way, but just because they had massive egos. Yeah. And what I'm saying is I wish I could tell the listeners that defend all these radio guys that have their own you know, agenda of talking smack about people that them giving your comment a like or them saying, Oh, thank you for bashing this person or whatever. They don't, they don't care about you. They don't, they They are, they are just, you are just improving their ego and making their head. That's already big, bigger. And you're not realizing that if you get to know the person, if they're doing that other behavior to other people, they're going to do it to you. You know, they're they're doing a, a show. You like the show. You listen to the show. Um, that's fine. But your loyalty towards this person that you don't know yes. is a little, I don't want to say it's creepy because it, cause it's not. It's it's flattering and we like it and it's, it's nice. But realize that when you're defending like somebody that you don't know Thank you. and you're Thank you. pissing off innocent people. You just got to kind of take a deep breath and a step back and be like, hey, wait a second. I mean, you know, you can press the like button. You can love listening to whoever you like to listen to. But at the end of the day, you're right. They don't give and two you shits don't, about you. And you don't know the person. No. You don't know. There's two sides to everything. And to think that what the person says on air is 100% true is nonsense. It's not, no. It's insanity. I can't tell you how many people hate me because of uh, people that I was associated with in the past. You got to have a job. You got to pay. You got to feed your kids. I got to pay my bills, man, you know, and that's it. And I I dealt with some controversial people at times. And I I still uh, like some of those people that I was was tied to. Uh, Bubba being one of them. Um, I like him. Um, I still like him. And he never did anything to me. He was always good to me. And, uh, you know, he was a little bit, uh, he was a little hyper at times when he started texting me at all hours of the night with his little fat fingers. Do, 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 do. He's he, like, but he's, he's, he's not a bad guy. He fascinates me because his legacy is so tainted, but he's so talented. He was, he was one of the greats. And uh, when I was, uh, you know, uh, got the job to be his program director, uh, I thought I made it. I was like, wow, this is this is great. This is a dream come true. Here I am, you know, moving to this city, which, you know, I love Tampa Bay Radio. And um, and now I'm going to be, you know, the program director of 
of this radio station and Bubba the Love Sponge is my morning guy. I mean, this is- What's a, what's a Bubba text at 2 a.m. like? Oh man, it's, <laughs> it's insanity. Does he text the same way he manically talks? Yes, he does. And you, you can all of a sudden when you're reading his text, you, you kind of read it in his voice <laughs> because it's exactly what he would say. Yeah. Oh, man. So I know you got to get this uh, winner in a few minutes. I do. I thank you. So promote yourself. Where can people hear everything you're up to? Um, Celebritijobber.com, a list of all of our um, uh, past episodes, and uh, you can subscribe or on the podcast Playground, which is uh, a network that Shaq is is involved with. Nice. uh, He's really helped me out and... uh, I couldn't thank him enough. 98.7 The Shark here in Tampa Bay on the afternoon, uh, 3 to 7 p.m. And um, that's that's pretty much all you can uh, you can get a hold of me at. Well, dude, it's been a lot of fun having you on the show. Hey, and- I had a lot of fun doing it. You're you're a nice fella. I like you a lot. You're, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're, you got a, a big future ahead of you. So keep the passion and uh, be consistent and keep, keep it up. Happy hour. Happy hour. 